if you find yourself as the phone person um, in your shop or wherever you work, you may have been confronted with the dreaded question, I think my phone has malware on it. Can you tell me if it does or not? Uh, some of the common themes when people believe their phone has been infected are things like poor battery life, dropped calls, maybe an unusually high phone bill or data plan spike. Um, they also may be experiencing some performance problems or just really unexpected behaviors. So how are you going to be able to tell if the device has malware in the first place? Well, if we're talking about an iOS device, this is a little bit more difficult than your Android counterparts. Uh, some of the things that make it so difficult, uh, we don't normally have access to the native application files on iOS devices. So those files of interest, with the .ipa file extension just aren't available for us to review. If you do get lucky enough to have access to those files, you'll most likely then need a Mac OS um, operating system to be able to decompile the app to take a look at what's going on inside. In addition to those issues, um, some of the other things that will keep you out of identifying malware on iOS devices may be the limited access that you're getting to the file system. Um, you may only be able to access user-created items pertaining to that application, and in some cases, you may just have a directory with no real data available to you. Why is this? Well, it is becoming more common for application developers to disallow information from being backed up. Um, so if we are acquiring devices um, in our traditional methods, we may not be able to access the data we're after. So what does this mean for you? Um, you're still going to have to make an attempt to locate malicious files um, or applications on the device. So some of the best practices would be to narrow down a timeline. Um, get an idea of when the device started acting strange. Um, this will help you go through the file system and at least narrow down files to a certain time um, and exclude some of those other ones that may have predated the incident. Next, I would ask your user, um, what application may be exhibiting that odd behavior? Maybe you can get um, a better sense of what applications are acting funny or behaving oddly. I would do the same thing with services. If you can pinpoint the service that may be acting strange, maybe your camera launches every night at 3 a.m. or maybe your microphone is in use um, at the same odd hour, specifically when you are not using that phone at all. Um, these are areas that we may be able to dig into a little deeper, even with that limited access that we have. And then I'd also take a look at some of the other avenues that data can get onto these devices. Um, does your user connect to Bluetooth or Wi-Fi frequently? Um, can you identify dates and times surrounding those activities? How are um, other methods of getting data to that phone? Do they use certain messaging apps. Are they an iMessage user? Do they send things through via SMS? Um, we can start to narrow down possible links that they've been forwarded or sent from another party. Um, we can take a look at their email for the same type of artifacts. And then I'd also examine um, any internet history that may be related to accessing files on the device, such as um, going out to Safari and maybe taking, taking a look at their browser history. Where have they been? What have they downloaded? We should be able to access these areas on the device, even with the traditional iTunes backup. Then I would start collecting the artifacts. Uh, one area that may be overlooked um, is the system or crash logs that are available by just simply connecting your device to a free tool called iBackupBot. Um, I would take, I would plug your device in, I would extract or export these items of interest to then be able to use along with your traditional acquisition techniques. Um, I would use something like iTunes or a commercial tool 
that pulls similar data such as Celebrite Physical Analyzer, Oxygen, Axiom. Um, they all are able to acquire iOS devices. Once you have those data sets, you should be able to start examining some files of interest. Um, because we have limited access to application data, um, we may have to go and think outside of the box. So in that sense, what is using the power? Uh, if you take a look at the current powerlog.plsql, it's essentially a uh, SQLite database which contains power events for that device. Um, we've already narrowed down a time set from our user or a, a time frame to examine, so you can go specifically into that database and then start looking at events that happened uh, around that same time. Another really good file to examine will be the data usage.sqlite file, another SQLite database. And in particular, the two tables um, that would be of most interest are probably the Z process and the Z live usage tables within that database. Again, they'll be able to correlate um, timestamps along with different services or installation packages that have been run or utilized on the device. One file that I would never overlook is the tcc.db. Um, you should always be able to access this file uh, from your iOS device, uh, whether you do an iTunes backup or use one of your commercial tools. Um, this is a great database to take a look at what services your applications have requested. So if you are examining something like a flashlight, but it has access to per, uh, perhaps your microphone, your camera, um, your address book, those may set off alarm bells in your head. So it may give you another application to then um, go out and identify for some strange behaviors. Maybe it is an application that the developer said, hey, you can include me in the backup. And now we have an area of interest that we can dive into. Once you've taken a look at all of these files and only after you have a successful iTunes acquisition or an acquisition created by one of your commercial tools, only then would I suggest the possibility of jailbreaking your device. Uh, again, this would war, uh, void any kind of warranty provided by Apple. So you'd have to let your user know um, this is a way that you are going to be able to access additional items of interest, but it will void the warranty and there is a chance that it could overwrite user data. So um, in the case of a malware investigation where quite often the user doesn't want to reprovision their device, I think at least posing the question is very important. Um, in order for the phone to be jailbroken though, it must be at a level that there is a jailbreak available. And um, there's some really good websites out there where you can find access to that information. So to sum up, if you are worried about your own devices, so if you are worried about protecting your own devices from malicious applications, I would do some of these key things. I would make sure my device is always running the latest firmware version provided by Apple. Um, it's pretty difficult to avoid this because Apple wants you to update your device every time there's a version available, and they'll let you know on a pretty consistent basis that there's a new firmware version out there. There is a chance that you are using a device that's not eligible for a firmware upgrade. Um, if, if that's you, I would say it's probably time for a new device. Um, you can still use some of these older devices, but those firmware version upgrades are essential to keeping your device patched and um, safe from attackers. Another thing I would definitely recommend is avoid jailbreaking your device. Uh, we mentioned jailbreaking and some of the, um, the great data that you can get access if you do jailbreak. But if it is your personal device, jailbreaking your device only opens you up to additional vulnerabilities. The next thing I would recommend will be to get iOS applications from the iTunes store. 
and avoid any workaround methods for getting applications on the device. Um, it is possible to push application files to an iOS device. Uh, you could do that um, with jailbroken phones by using uh, a separate tool to push applications on, or you could download applications to a host computer and then get the application on your device that way. Um, there are several um, malware samples out in the wild, and one of them did specifically target the DRM, the um, device rights management system that was able to um, install applications on devices. So just keep that in mind. Again, and I'd also keep any computers that you regularly connect your iOS device to, I would keep those up to date and patched as well. So if hearing this information has you excited to learn more about iOS forensics, I would like to recommend some of the following upcoming courses. Um, in January, we have one course in Amsterdam. In February, we have offerings in New Orleans, Dallas, and Tyson's Corner, Virginia. Um, in addition to the New Orleans course, if you can't make it um, to the live course, you can sit virtually live in class by attending via simulcast. And in April, we also have three course runs, one in Orlando, Florida, one in London, and one in Boston. Hopefully, you can join us soon. Thank you.